the KEF KC92. So I, I made a little post and um, <laughs> it pissed off some of you, but I think more than anything, people want to know why I called this thing a turd. It, most of it has to do with price. It doesn't have to do with performance. I'm sure it performs just fine. Um, this this design, as you can see here, uh, they have another design. Let me see the, what is it called? The, they had a link to it in here. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Damn it, where'd it go? Oh, that's it right there, the, the K62. So if we open that in a new tab, as if I don't have enough tabs open. Um, that's this one. And what what's funny about this one is this is just a money saving and space saving technology. In fact, if you look at this, they even cheat. Uh, they could have used the same size voice coil uh, on both, but then they might collide. So this one actually goes on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. This one goes on the inside and then this one goes on the outside. So, but the reason for doing something like this is to save space and money. So, because otherwise, like you see in the other revision uh, of that same sort of, I don't want to say, I'll say configuration, uh, is that they use actually two separate motors. Um, they use a very long drawn uh, frame. And the only reason for this is because they probably use poly cones and poly cones are, are weak. Uh, and so it requires a lot of length in order to get the strength out of them that, that you want. So I've talked about this before with JL Audio. JL Audio does the same thing. Instead of using a strong paper cone or uh, a carbon fiber or glass fiber or something like that, they, they use poly uh, because it's cheap. Uh, now, some of this has mostly um, uh, gimmicks. So like the fact that it's white, uh, the fact that it has this kind of, um, uh, space with a reverse surround in it so that all you see is the the piston coming in and out what I thought was really hilarious was uh, you go to the website and I've let this load for like two days this looks like it's from 1995 <laughs> it's supposed to be uh, look see I can grab it um, but it's like super low res and just super shitty so but um, as you can see on the back um, these open fins, I imagine, just by looking at it, I don't know for sure, but I can tell, or at least it, 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 I'll say it indicates that this is actually uh, fan cooled, but it may not be, especially if it's class D. Uh, we'll just close that because that is ridiculous. This is the website, by the way. Um, let me go, did I go? Oh, I opened up a new tab. So we'll just close that so it doesn't get any more bandwidth. But uh, go back one. All right. So. Uh, this one, let's talk about this one. This is the uh, KC92. Um, a couple things that make it a turd, which is number one, it uses two nine inch woofers. So that makes this proprietary, um, meaning you have to go to them for service. Uh, again, I don't recommend that. There are lots of, you know, when you look at um, the standard, and this is from 19... 97, 98, that uh, Tilo Stompler of TC Sounds was in cahoots with Bob Carver to develop the Sunfire True subwoofer TRU, uh, which was a uh, super inefficient, overbuilt eight inch subwoofer with a passive radiator and 500 watt amp. Um, and it, it does really good. It, it's very, it's excellent, but it uses all off the shelf parts. So that helps keep production costs down. This one, not so much. Um, you're talking about um, a custom tooled frame, custom tooled surround and cone. The rest of this all looks pretty standard. Uh, as far as spider goes, you can, you know, you can find those uh, and the magnets you can probably tool up. Uh, you don't even need to tool them up. That's all probably free tooling or just open source. Uh, there it is. Um, some of these companies I've, I've watched, um, forget what it's called like something Fi or whatever it's a it's a little tiny company that uh, which is probably like one maybe two dudes um, that use uh, an AI uh, integrated sort of uh, um, designed surround and it looks real weird that's all um, it, is it any better prove it <laughs> and even if you do prove it uh, prove it's worth the extra money that you're charging which it's not 
but that's fine. And uh, let's see, two nine inch drivers uh, achieve depths of 11 hertz. Well, you know, at, at what dB? So the, the good thing about it is that it has two 500 watt amps, one per subwoofer. Uh, as you can see there, double stack magnet with the cutaway. Um, does it even say, it looks like maybe a two and a half inch that would be appropriate, like an oversized two and a half, probably like two and five eighths. Um, so basically like a kicker uh, CVX 10, right? Uh, would be the equivalent. Um, but you can check all this stuff out your, yourself. Also, you can see this, this cutaway here. This is just a dust cap. Uh, I made fun of it and talked about it uh, as if it was the, uh, you know, people in my age bracket always uh, really liked... <laughs> The look, especially of, I think it was, is it, isn't it, no, Darth Vader was still wearing black. Oh, that's right. It was the storm, the, the Arctic stormtroopers in the beginning of uh, Empire Strikes Back. That was like, those guys look fucking cool. Basically look like Cobra Commander, uh, but in white. And uh, so, because white is usually associated with good. And then to see something so badass and evil, uh, like the stormtroopers in uh, white as a very, you know, interesting contrast. But I think that's what they were basically going for, too. Here, I compared it to the um, the movie Oblivion that stars Tom Cruise and a bunch of other Tom Cruises guarding some planet's resources or something like that. And it ends up being the, the clone uh, Tom Cruise that escapes and meets Morgan Freeman, who is the uh, leader of the underground. But um, let's see. It uses DSP. The way that they get away with the low bass frequency is they just use a really soft suspension. Um, and um, th this is all a sealed cabinet, which adds to the suspension. Uh, but what it does is it makes it very compliant. And so what you end up with is a very uh, high VAS, uh, meaning a, a large box requirement. You can control this with a high BL, meaning a very strong motor. And then uh, also the DSP allows you to basically add equalization, uh, which is what I think uh, Tilo and Bob Carver came up with as far as their solution which was basically one of these drivers, and then they used a passive, and then that gives you a certain response. And then sometimes you can uh, build in uh, an equalizer circuit. Uh, basically, just you just don't make it variable, like you don't make it uh, available for adjustment to the end user. You build it already in the circuit. You've seen, uh, you've seen this with um, the Young YUNG um, Class D amplifier uh, plate uh, amplifiers that from Parts Express. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, they add like plus six at 30 hertz, which is, you know, about right. Um, uh, and, and most people enjoy that anyway, even whether they use a, a sealed cabinet or a ported cabinet. Now, remember, uh, somebody just asked me too. They're like, what's your opinion on uh, cabinets? Really, the best, most efficient and useful cabinet is just a ported box, which is also known as a fourth order. So when you're calling a bandpass box a fourth order, it's kind of misleading. And I... I don't like using that terminology for that because it's not a true fourth order. It's a, it's a dual uh, second order. So there's a there's a second order roll off on the top end, and then there's a second order roll off on the bottom end. And so that's not really a fourth order. You're just doing dumb math. Uh, so, but either way, a regular ported box is a true fourth order uh, that has a roll off of you know if you look at your orders, six dB per order. So you're looking at 24 dB per octave slope roll off after the tuning frequency. So what that means is that if your ported box has a tuning frequency of say 30 hertz, after 30 hertz, it's gonna decline at 24 dB per octave. So that's the roll off. The roll off rate is, is what the, you know, 6 dB, 12 dB, 18 dB, uh, uh, 24 dB per octave. And an octave is a doubling or a halving uh, H A L V I N G having of uh, octave of a frequency. So uh, that means that if your FS or say your tuning frequency of your subwoofer box is 30 hertz, then after uh, one octave, which would be half of 30, so at 15 hertz, so at 15 hertz, your response is down by 24 dB, which is quite a bit. So um, again, it's just a it's uh, it's just the most efficient and way best way to sort of uh, have a good sounding enclosure without too much equalization and without a lot of power. Um, like I said, the other way uh, you can achieve this is by using a sealed box. Uh, sealed boxes are also more pliable 
to DSP and to equalization in general. And typically you can get the same, uh, with all things being pretty much equal, um, you can get the same response out of a subwoofer if you put it in a sealed box uh, and then just add more power and some equalization. That's it. Also known as bass boost. So I wasn't expecting David to grind. Let me pause this real quick. There we go. I just closed the door like I'm jacking off at work while people are here. So yeah, that way you add an element of danger. Um, let me see here. I think that was about it as far as this goes. Um, the price for something like this is about two grand, which I think is pretty out of whack. But you know, with um, when you look at the, I think the initial price was about eight forty nine for the Sunfire True Subwoofer, uh, maybe six forty nine, and then that was in ninety eight. So if you look at um, inflation since then, it's probably right around the same. So it's still expensive, but you know, whatever. And as far as KEF goes, um, I think the, probably the, <clears throat> the most uh, innovative technology that they came out with was uh, having a concentrically mounted tweeter in the middle of the mid-range that also shared the same uh, flux as the uh, mid, which is um, what um, Larry Frederick did with the tweeters in Cicada. So if you look at the, uh, the coaxials that he used, um, the tweeter is actually mounted on the back and uh, they use just one big Neo motor, which is great because then what happens is you're using this giant Neo motor to power a tweeter, which is like so much flux and really high response. Uh, and the way that, that he, get a, he gets away with it is that he does a reverse mount, which is how they do PA drivers where the tweeter is, the diaphragm is actually mounted on the back and then it fires through the center. So, but I'll, I'll do a video on that if you guys want, but I wanted to go through this real quick and just sort of dispel, you know, you, you can actually make something like this yourself. So using Parts Express stuff uh, and even car woofers. So I actually want to do a whole video. And again, they have this stupid venting here. This doesn't do anything. It does, well, I should say it doesn't do what you think it does. So the idea of what they think it does is that it allows for the heat to dissipate through these holes. The problem with this design is that it then puts a lot of air pressure stress on the dust cap, and that is a no-no. So you end up, uh, you need a really good bonding system to this. The, the better way to go is just use this as a regular, um, you know, strong paper cone, uh, and then put an inner cap on it. And then that way you keep, you isolate all the, the heat that is generated by the abuse of the voice coil out to the steel in the T-yoke and also in the top plate. So this is interesting right here. Look at that. That is interesting. Um, and I actually had this idea of extending the top plate into the gap to help get away some of the heat. And then you sink it to the um, frame. That is unique. I want to see if they have that patented because I actually had that same idea for big car woofers. Uh, I don't think so. I'll look up the patents though on this one, though. but I'll put a link to this in the, this is from the Audio Express website. Audio Express is the, um, they make a uh, speaker builder magazine and um, a voice coil magazine. It's basically the um, top. I don't think there's anybody else that competes with them uh, as far as um, loudspeaker industry um information, magazine, that sort of thing. This, this market is so tiny. So, but they are, they're the ones that also print the, uh, loudspeaker, um, industry source book, LIS. So if you, you know, if you're into loudspeakers and designing them, uh, everything from the drivers to the enclosures, to the amplifiers, uh, it's a good idea to be associated with these guys. And this is a free, um, uh, newsletter that I get the audio voice newsletter that I get. You can sign up for free. If you want to get these, um, basically you just get an email with a bunch of links to stories like this one. So, and again, this was planted by uh, KEF. Uh, they may have even, you know, paid for it, uh, depending on, uh, you, you, you can ask this guy here, Alfred Moody, on uh, whether or not he was compensated for uh, introducing this article into the, the, the magazine. But um, yeah, and so... Uh, all of this is just uh, an old rehash of Tilo's original work. Um, and Tilo was really the innovator for high BL drivers uh, before anybody. Um, the, the, the irony is that he pushed 
high BL drivers mixed with under hung uh, voice coils. If you look on the old TC Sounds website back in like uh, 05, 06, all the way back to 98, that's what he promoted most. And then when he would advertise in Voice Coil Magazine, I remember his ads, um, he would always um, you know, talk about the benefits of having an underhung uh, motor. And then the irony of that is that his probably most famous and most um, uh, popular uh, invention was the variable wind voice coil, which used a, an extreme overhung design. Um, under, and like I said, uh, and again, I, once I find these articles, I can scan them. They said, I already talked to Voice Coil Magazine and, and Speaker Builder Magazine, the guys here at, um, uh, it's called Audio Express. And uh, there it is, Wait. Audio Express. Um, uh, I've already talked to them as long as they, I give um, credit to the, especially the author of the article and also to them and promote them. I can reprint whatever I want. So um, it's, uh, it's a, again, it's a very small um, community and we all just try to help each other, even if I criticize products like this. And again, this, I'm not saying this is a bad product. I'm just saying it's very expensive. And then the overall uh, lifetime of maintenance, uh, you know, for this thing is going to be expensive. So, uh, but everybody is trying to be like Apple and Starbucks where, you know, they want to make it normal for people to charge, you know, 10 to $15 for a drink, you know, that costs 50 cents to make. And that's even with labor and overhead. Um, there's other, other parties too, that want to do this with movies, including Spielberg and uh, Lucas. Um, they wanted, you know, they wanted to, before pandemic, they wanted to turn the movie experience into a hundred dollar experience. Where it was a hundred dollars a head. Yeah. hundred dollars per person. Um, and I think they were going to integrate things like, um, if you go to watch a Star Wars movie, then they have an actual uh, LARP, um, which LARP is uh, live action role play. Uh, they'll have like Darth Vader make an entrance to the theater and uh, somebody else, and then they do a lightsaber battle and then they exit. So again, it's it's bringing, <laughs> it's, what, what, what is that, uh, what is that place where they do the jousting that's like super dangerous? Even if it's fake, right? Even Even like wrestling is very dangerous, even if you know it's fake. Uh, <laughs> and again, are you not entertained? Like, really, what are you doing with all this entertainment? Um, uh, I have a, I came up with a Sunday sermon thing as well. So also for today, because today is Sunday, uh, about that. If you actually have a secure personality, if you have, if you're, you're if you're not insecure, which is being secure in your personality, if you're not insecure and you're wise with your money, places like Disneyland would not exist, right? But I'll, I'll get into that. So, um, and also the logic and the theory behind that taking your kids or your family to uh, Disneyland, it actually does them a disservice. Um, it, it, it cheats them, it robs them of the, um, the blunt reality that is life. <laughs> when it's, you could have spent your time and money preparing them for the blunt reality of life rather than uh, entertaining a uh, unsustainable fantasy. But we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> Deep fucking thoughts with Patrick. Uh, but that's that's my review real quick of the K, the KF, KEF uh, KC92. Uh, I also wanna do a quick um, uh, history research on KEF. Um, a lot of these companies like Altec Lansing, KEF, a lot of these were old former uh, JBL engineers that had left uh, Cambridge Soundworks, um, uh, Henry Kloss that had worked for JBL for a really long time and then went off and were like, you know, fuck you guys, I can go make my own company. And then they made their own mail order companies where they just designed their products, had everything made overseas and then imported it and they made their retirement and that was it. So, But I think KEF was one of those projects where they went off and they had some great ideas that... Um, were either spinoffs of stuff that they had uh, engineered for JBL uh, that either JBL didn't support or didn't fully commit to, um, or just, I don't know, uh, didn't use in a way that they wanted to. Because that happens a lot, actually, when you get a really good engineer, he has really good ideas, but then corporate looks at uh, the finances and they don't want to finance something like that. So the biggest uh, um, perspective I can put for you guys would be like, 
When I go into uh, the management office at Recoil Audio, I have all kinds of great ideas in the same way that Jonathan Price has great ideas in that, you know, hey, you want to do this in five different colors or eight different colors. You want to do something high performance. You want to take you know advantage of this uh, market opportunity for these, these big high markup, high margin items. And the problem is, is that they go, mm, no, we want the mainstream money. They don't want the the fringe or the, uh, uh, you know, um, minority money. Uh, when I say more minority, I'm talking about the size of the market. I'm not talking about race or anything like that. Um, but um, uh, base heads are the minority in as far as the consumer electronics market. Uh, and I, I'm actually glad that uh, JP has been successful in introducing a lot of color to the market, um, which you know Apple did with their, uh, I think it was the iMac, uh, it was like this big old CRT. Uh, uh, in fact, I'll make that the, uh, the, the thumbnail on this video. But um, uh, yeah, and JP's having a great day. He's having a great year. He's making lots of money, good for him. Uh, but uh, there are older people that uh, disagree with that um, and want to go after the mainstream market, like the ones that uh, Sony, Kenwood, uh, JVC, uh, Kicker, all those guys, you know, Kicker's in Walmart. Uh, they want to go after that market because I think it's because it's easier. It's less risky. But um, anyways, I'll talk to you later, guys. I'm doing more videos today. Thank you for watching.